that's okay, Sammy. Uh, we'll do some reshoots if we need to, okay? I, I'm just... Sorry. Oh, hi there. As you may have guessed, it's the 2022 CAFCAT Awards. I would like to welcome my co-host, Anand Rajaram, for joining me here in my own personal walk-in closet. I am so happy to be here and welcome my co-host, Steffi D. Dominic Antonio. <laughs> We're actually here in the renowned costume house Berman and Company, so they can dress us however they want. I'm pretty sure they locked the door so we can't leave. We're playing dress up all night? I just want to point out that I tried that dress on at the fitting and it looks way better on me. Okay, well you can have it after. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. We are so honored to be here and to dress up to present the best in Canadian costume design and arts. From concept to creation, we are so excited to showcase the incredible talents of Canadian costume professionals and their work that appeared on screen. <laughs> oh, um, uh, no pockets. <laughs> I really gotta go get that. Can I leave you to set up? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Good. Good. It's set up. What? What is it supposed to set up? Set up what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Ah, uh -huh, right. So let me get that straight. The characters are going to start at a Victorian street urchin ball, dancing in the dirt. Then they get painted with candy cane stripes, fall into a sticky marshmallow river with rivulets of caramel, uh, fight their way through a chocolate-covered apocalypse. Ah, uh -huh, right. And I, I can't forget about the 50-person dance number while it snows icing sugar. Yes, we will make sure that you can see the icing sugar coating the fur collars of all 50 vintage coats. Yep, no problem. That's what textile and breakdown artists do. And the nominees for excellence in crafts. Textiles are... Key breakdown artist Kim Lennox and team for Ghostbusters Afterlife. Key Breakdown Artist Lanny Campbell and Team for Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins. Key Breakdown Artist Lanny Campbell and Team for Peacemaker 107, Stop Dragging My Heart Around. Key Breakdown Artists Megan Anchetta, Melanie Turcott and Team for Nightmare Alley. And Key Textile Artist Bonnie McCabe and Team for Star Trek Discovery 401, Kobayashi Maru. And the... Okay. And the winner of the Cap Cat Award for Excellence in Crafts Textile is... Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins. Lanny Campbell, Samantha Stroman, Ellie Schultz, and Carolyn Bentley. Samantha Stroman and I accept this award on behalf of our textile arts team, including Ellie, Carolyn, Natalie, Liana, Kira, Denise, Che, and Brianna. We would like to thank CAFCAD for recognizing excellence in crafts. We're honored to be nominated along with other talented textile artists in this category. We would like to thank costume designer Louise Mingenbach for the opportunity and encouragement to explore and create Japanese inspired text textiles for the cast of Snake Eyes. Thank you to the entire costume team, costume supervisor Janice McIsaac, assistant designer Kareen Heaver, and the and our great building team. Thank you. The next award is for excellence in crafts, building. You know, costume building is a lot like house building. Oh, come on. Costume building is not at all similar to building a house. You don't need to get an architect's plans. Uh, cutter's pattern based on the actor and then building to those specific measurements. Okay, but it's not like you need to apply for permits. Uh, hello, network approval. Yeah, you need permits. I thought this through pretty good, okay? Insulation and drywall. Canvas and the lining. Windows and doors. Welt pockets and armholes. Um, landscaping. Just how revealing is this costume? Okay, fine, fine. It's like building a house. I told you! Taking the shapes of a body and knowing the drape of a fabric, the best costume builders can realize a designer's vision to perfection. And the nominees for excellence in crafts building are... Nightmare Alley Cutting Team for Nightmare Alley. Carla Mingiardi and Team for What We Do in the Shadows 309, A Farewell. Elena Gregosheva and team for When Calls the Heart, A12, The Kiss. And the Star Trek Discovery build team for Star Trek Discovery 401, Kobayashi Maru. Ta-da! Oh. Go try it on. Okay. And the winner of the CAFCAT Award for Excellence in Crafts Building is... Nightmare Alley, Nightmare Alley Cutting Team. Good evening, everyone. We are so excited to receive this award. It is a truly great honor. Thank you, CAFCAD, for your consideration and for selecting us to receive this wonderful award. Thank you to our superbly talented stitchers whose energy and expertise made all of this possible. Thank you to Lewis, whose design and leadership really empowered us to access our creativity to build these amazing costumes. Being a part of this team has been truly inspiring and it is a true honor to receive this award. Thank you. Ready? Uh-huh. 
Whoa! Something wrong on it? I don't know. Something feels a bit sketchy. Get it? Because we're... Illustrators are the gateway to lifting ideas out of the minds of costume designers and onto paper. Armed with visual references, swatches, and vague half-text messages, illustrators perform feats akin to the mentalists of old. The nominees for the CAFCAT Award for Excellence in Crafts Illustration are... Terry Pitts for the Mysterious Benedict Society 102, Carrying a Bird. Keith Lau for Snowpiercer 201, The Time of Two Engines and Keith Lau for Schmigadoon 102, Lover's Spat. This award is generously sponsored by IATSE 891. And the winner of the CAFCAT Award for Excellence in Crafts illustration is... Schmigadoon 102, Lover's Spat, Keith Lau. CAFTCAD was created out of a passion for promoting Canadian costume design and arts. We are able to continue recognizing Canada's top talent thanks to our generous sponsors, who have been true champions of the CAFTCAD Awards. It's with deep gratitude that we present our 2022 sponsors. As our top pinnacle sponsor, IATSE 873 has granted us the honor of naming each of our costume design and TV awards after them. Loyal sponsor since the very beginning of CAFCAD, Nobus is our crown and industry icon supporter. Our platinum sponsor for styling and design in music videos and commercials is Berman and & Company. And IATSE 891 is our sponsor for excellence in crafts illustration. Our gold sponsor is the City of Toronto. Our wonderful silver sponsors are the Ian Drummond Collection, Walter Claussen, Nabet 700 Unifor, IATSE 212, and William F. White. Thank you to our bronze level sponsors, Capilano University, Le Grand Costumier, Perfect Leather Goods, Canada Life, FMR Costumes, The Costume Collective, IATSE 634, IATSE 856, and Dufferin Gate Studios. And finally, our copper level sponsors, Bestway Donlan's Cleaners, Image Wardrobe, and Dalhousie University. Our costumes help tell the story of the USS Discovery's leap into the 31st century by updating and streamlining uh, the past aesthetic of the show. Uh, sneaker molded costumes replaced higher profile costumes that we saw in the past seasons. We debuted new uniforms and new dress uniforms with low profile trims and new tactical gear that brought us into the future. We also debuted the all shanes that used hand sculpted and 3D printed trims to mix futuristic elements into our alien costuming. The strangers are a family. So there's a dad creature, a mom creature, and then a, a child. They're soft, they're furry, they're colorful. The idea of placing human beings in the costumes uh, was controlled pretty much by the size of the actors that they were specifically wanting. From there, we needed to build forms so that Tannis and her team could start to build in the suits for the uh, the wefts and the fur. From the beginning, it was always they want to be lovely, lovable creatures with moving ears and with like made out of wig wefts, so that they could sort of move and flow with the wind. Two of our heroes are on a boat in the middle of the East River heading towards a garbage island and they hear the mesmerizing song of a siren. This goes farther back to kind of the Greek take on it in which it is a woman's head and then the body is kind of the scales and the feathers of a bird. So what we needed to do was recreate a bird but kind of with the sensibility of the Jersey Shore. And our prosthetics team came to us with these wonderful chicken legs that we had to incorporate in and it worked really well together. So the bat wing costume was based on 
a drawing done by the young Luke Fox, uh, made by his father, Lucius Fox. He gets to show off his technical prowess. So all of that build, all of that intricacy, all the stuff for close-ups was really important uh, to sort of the layers underneath the suit. The actual bracer pieces were pretty fun because one thing Maya wanted was to actually have uh, crossbow limbs pop out of it, but she wanted to make sure that it actually happened by the actor, not just, you know, offset or CGI or anything like that. So we actually worked uh, really closely with an engineer to actually get it to actually, you push a button and they fling out, but also it was an independent piece that could come off and be replaced and um, can work with stunts and whatnot, but also really could clip on and clip off really quickly. The nominees for excellence in craft special effects building are the Star Trek Discovery FX Build and Sculpt Team for Star Trek Discovery 401 Kobayashi Maru, Tannis Hegan and Keith Arbutnot for Strangers Airbnb, Judy McDougall and Madeline Bryan for What We Do in the Shadows 307 The Siren, and the Batwing Design Team for Batwoman 218 Power. And the winner for Excellence in Crafts Special Effects Building is... Strangers Airbnb, Tannis Hegan and Keith Arbutnot. Thank you so much, CapCAD, for the award and for the recognition. We'd like to thank Sonny Garasimowitz for his beautiful characters. Uh, Airbnb for the commercial itself and the team at Masters Effects for all the support. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. From the C to the A to the F to the T to the C A D, CAFCAD makes some noise. Y'all are some badass stitches. Let me hear you say, Judy. Stalling the costume design, never the time, never the budget. Feeling the grind, hearing the wine, suddenly no, everybody. Stop, stop, stop. Sorry, Anand, but I just heard that the rap got cut. What? Yeah. But how am I going to write off this fly suit as an expense if it's on the video? I guess talk to your accountant. Styling and design in music videos and commercials is a little bit like making a micro short film. Except everything you do is being scrutinized by up to 40 clients oh, from the agency who have opinions and notes. <laughs> Everyone knows how much we love notes. And you had four minutes to put it all together using your secret stylish resources while keeping on your I'm so chill face. Chill face. Even though you're being asked for the latest Dior sneakers while shooting in a parking lot at 3 a.m. Dr 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 dress! Yo, you're really feeling this, huh? Mm. You want to rap about it? Not right now. And the nominees for styling and design in music videos and commercials are... Nicole McCormick and team for Heritage Minute, The Discovery of Insulin. Jess Mori and team for Clean Sight by Ally featuring KCMQ. Tammy Joe and team for Heroes Return, Vancouver Canucks. And marie Tremblay and team for Ontario Power Generation, Damn Ridiculous. This award is generously sponsored by Berman and & Company. And the winner of the CAFCAD Award for Styling and Design in Music Videos and Commercials is... Ontario Power Generation, Damn Ridiculous, Marie-Ève Tremblay. Thank you so much. To be nominated is an honor, and to win is truly rewarding. And to have my work recognized by my peers means the world to me, so thank you. I would also like to thank my amazing director, Lisa Mann, for trusting me with her very creative vision, and my assistant, Megan Bonafant, for following my crazy ideas. <laughs> but most of all, thank you, Gat Gat. web series. Creative control is unlimited. Make anything you like. As long as it costs 10% of what it would on a real show. Congratulations! You're shopping closets and making a ball gown out of coffee filters. Good luck. You're going to love it here. 
And the nominees for the CAFCAT Award for Costume Design in a Web Series are... Rebecca Toon for Cadoodle TV Story Snacks. What's the word? Melanie Lawrence for Lockdown 11. Who is question mark face? And Karina Barros and team for Narcoly 201. And the winner of the CAFCAT Award for Costume Design in a Web Series is... Kadoodle TV Story Snacks. What's the word? Rebecca Toon. I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who have supported me as I go through this insane career in film. And I also just want to thank everyone at Kadoodle TV for allowing me to play. Because when we come together as artists, and are able to be creative, that's when we really come alive. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Did you use all the coffee filters? No. I bought like a thousand. Give me. Mm -mm. Give me. No. Give me. Mm -mm. Give me. Mm -mm. I need it. It's Unbelievable. Good. Okay, get out of here. When designing for short film, it's like designing a whole universe that only exists for a single moment. Ah. And since many short films are often passion projects, ah, that universe is balanced on top of a shoestring budget, on top of an ironing board in somebody's mom's basement. Ah, 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 ah. We find ourselves in odd people's homes using strange equipment to desperately attempt to make a real cup of coffee. <laughs> Especially if somebody's used up all the coffee filters! The nominees for the CAFCAT Award for Costume Design in the short film are... Florence Barrett for The Day We Left, Crystal Silden and Team for He Murdered Sleep, Greg Blagoyev for Shadowed, Adriana Fulop and Lee Smith for The Mush Hole, and Carmen Thompson for Kiri and the Girl. The winner of the CAFCAT Award for Costume Design and Short Film is... Kiri and the Girl, Carmen Thompson. Clicko, clicko, haichka siam, flako hoopoos, copper moon. Carmen Thompson, I thank you for the nomination and the award of, for Kafka short film. Curing the Girl was a, a lot of fun to work on. It was uh, extremely proud and a, a blessed moment to work on a show that was mainly BIPOC and the team itself uh, were fun to work with and we had a lot of fun. So thank you for the recognition for the work that we all did on Kiri. Ooh, coffee! <laughs> Not for you. <laughs> to see the work of our excellent 2022 CAFCAT Award nominees, please visit www.kafcadpresents.com. My name is Emlyn Murray, and I have been nominated for Wildhood. Wildhood is a coming-of-age odyssey about a two-spirit Mi'kmaq teen who is in search of uh, his identity and community. I wanted the background of the characters to be readily apparent when we saw them on screen. For the majority of the movie, the characters wear the same costume, so I wanted the costume to become both the comforting cradle and also the armor with which they move through the world. My name is Courtney Mitchell, and I've been nominated for Quickening. Quickening follows a young Pakistani-Canadian woman as she navigates the divide between her cultural and personal beliefs. It was important to me to use color palette to actually create a visual division. In Sheila's home life, she had warm tones, rich colors. And then in her social spaces, I used a lot of acidic and neon colors. The success of the costumes was because we didn't treat them as costumes at all, but actually 
as an amalgamation of people that we knew in this city. My name is Rafaela Rabinowitz and I've been nominated for Broken Diamonds. Broken Diamonds is a contemporary feature um, about a relationship between a brother and sister. What I loved about the costumes is the way that they represented growth for the characters. We used them as a tool constantly to show what was actually happening in the storyline for them. So it actually became a bit of a character on its own. We used it by using color and texture and patterns to just show the blossoming of the characters and their relationship. Uh, my name is Florence Barrett and I've been nominated for the indie feature category for the film Portraits from a Fire. Portraits from a Fire is really the story of an indigenous teenage boy as he is just kind of fighting through all of these like really weird distorted realities that just kind of unravel and lead us towards this big secret. One of my major jumping in points in this particular production were really the color, the opposing color palettes of nature and of fire. And really what happens after everything has just been ripped through and destroyed. Like what does that char pattern do? I really just kind of wanted to play with the motif and the idea of like what happens to your clothes after you've been set on fire. And you know, what happens when you're left behind? Hi, my name is Jennifer Stroud. I'm the costume designer for A Nightmare Wakes. Uh, our film is set in 1816 during the Regency period. The costumes help tell the story through the class levels of each of our characters, as well as the journey that they take. I love when wardrobe goes on a journey. I love when we start beautiful and put together and then just completely shredded and falling apart and sort of filthy so we can just see how the character really feels. The nominees for costume design in an indie feature are Emlyn Murray for Wildhood, Courtney Mitchell and team for Quickening, Rafaela Rabinovich and team for Broken Diamonds, Florence Barrett and team for Portraits from a Fire, and Jennifer Stroud and team for A Nightmare Wakes. And the winner in costume design in an indie feature is A Nightmare Wakes. Jennifer Stroud. The Nightmare Wakes was such an incredible experience for us. We loved designing both beautiful and tragic looks. Our crew was amazing. Maddie, Natalie, Katie, and V, thank you for all of your hard work. Wild Obscura Films, Zed Filmworks, Rob, Devin, Gabe, and especially Nora, thank you for having us and allowing us to help create your vision. Thank you to our families for always being there for us. And thank you to the CAFCADs. We're so proud of being a part of this community. So I'd just like to say thank you very much for this. It was really unexpected when I got the call saying that we as a business were getting the Icon Award. It really blew me away. We spend our days and our weeks in this little room doing our thing kind of at arm's length from, you know, where all the action is happening. So the fact that, you know, anyone in Kafka, let alone a whole lot of people, thought that it we were an appropriate recipient of the Icon Award, really floors me. I started the business 17 years ago. It's my baby, but it's by no means only me. And it's not just me receiving the award today. It is my entire crew. It's Anson, it's Shay, it's Courtney, Bronwyn, Aaron, Mel, Tristan, Murphy, and then also, can't forget behind the scenes, Heidi and Angela, you know, without them, I wouldn't have a business, or if I did, it would not be working at the level we are right now. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. It just thank you. Thanks for the recognition. Thanks for thinking of us. It's really humbling. And I look forward to working with everyone from CAFCAD for hopefully years to come.
Contemporary costume design in film and TV brings us to environments and communities we think we understand. I mean, we all get dressed, right? What could be so hard about a modern day show? Can you help me out here? Between finding just the right leather jacket and the perfect on-trend jeans, while creating multiples for stunts and spills, it's a lot that looks so easy to the untrained eye. And the nominees for costume design, TV contemporary, East Coast are... Shelley Mansell and team for Sort of 101, Sort of Gone. Bernadette Croft and team for Ginny and Georgia 110, the worst betrayal since Jordan and Kylie. Mandy Line and team for The Bold Type, 506, I expect you to have adventures. Michelle Light and team for Kings of Napa, 101. And Avery Plews and team for Sex Life, 108. This award is generously sponsored by IATSE 873. And the winner for costume design in TV Contemporary East Coast is... Sort of 101, Sort of Gone, Shelley Mansell. And the nominees for costume design TV Contemporary West Coast are... Lorraine Carson and team for Made 109. Alan Anderson and team for The Babysitter's Club 203, Stacy's Emergency. Tracy Bolton and team for Motherland Fort Salem 209, Mother of All, Mother of None. Adejoka Taiwo and team for Tribal 207, Starlight, Star Bright. And Andre Ricard and team for Jan 306, The Money Train. This award is generously sponsored by IATSE 873. And the winner for costume design in TV Contemporary West Coast is... Made 109 Sky Blue, Lorraine Carson. Hello from Vancouver, the land of liquid sunshine. CalCab members, I wish to thank you for recognizing what it takes to portray real life characters. I had the most fantastic team on MADE and I wish to thank each and every one of them. A special acknowledgement to Kevin Knight who is no longer with us. Kevin brought so much to this and each and every project that he touched. And Kevin, this one is for you. The nominees for costume design in film contemporary are Patty Henderson and team for Nobody. Trisha Baker and team for Spin. Jennifer Lance and team for Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City. Carolyn Cranston and team for Love Hard. And Kendra Terpenning and team for Night Raiders. And the winner for costume design in film contemporary is... Night Raiders, Kendra Terpenning. Hey, thank you so much to everyone at CAFCAD for this incredible honor. I want to thank the producing team at Night Raiders and of course our incredible writer-director, Dennis Goulet. Thank you for your incredible vision on this project. This show had a wonderful team, so I would like to thank Kurupa Rekihana, Ashley O'Freddy, and Joey Watson for all of your work. And finally, I would like to thank my husband, who absolutely was going to propose to me during prep of Night Raiders, but had to postpone because I decided to work on a Saturday. Thank you, Tommy, for all of your patience and support. Whoa! Whoa! Hi, I'm Joanna Siracoma, and I'm the chair of the 2022 CAFCAT Awards. It's impossible to count exactly how many costume professionals have guided us and influenced us in our work, whose stilettos have carved a path for our sneakers. We might have an inkling that that cool costume trick we just learned was passed down through generations of people on wardrobe trucks at dawn, but it seems in the moment it feels much more important that the show goes on and that costume makes it to set. It is in this moment that we realize we're all interconnected through intricate threads of tradition and skills that have shaped us as to who we are and who we will become. We celebrate those who have left us in the past year. Their artistry will echo forward. 
Their legacies live on in their work on screen, in our collective knowledge, and in our hearts. My name is Valerie Halverson and I'm nominated for Mahalia. Mahalia Jackson is the story of an American gospel singer following our young Mahalia uh, from 1925 when she has this gift for singing. And we follow her through her life and her rise to stardom through five decades. We traveled through five decades of fashion and I wanted to really show the distinction of the different decades as we travel through them for our audience, but also the rise to fame of Mahalia Jackson. She was becoming wealthier and wealthier, and so we really needed to show that arc. My name is Louis Cicada, and I'm the costume designer on Nightmare Alley. Nightmare Alley is a one-man odyssey from rags to riches to rags. I would say the biggest challenge of uh, costume designing this film, we had to create two distinct worlds with completely different senses of aesthetic, design, and form. That was a huge undertaking with a crew of up to 50 people at, at one point in production. Hi, my name is Avery Poulos and I'm the costume designer for 8-Bit Christmas. 8-Bit Christmas is about a group of friends on an adventure attempting to acquire their first Nintendo. I tried to approach the costume design in a very colorful, fun, adventurous manner. I designed it from the point of view of, of the kid. We wanted to create this very saturated world through a children's point of view. And so a lot of the colors we used were very sort of bright, and playful and fun. Hi, my name is Patty Henderson and I have been nominated for Flag Day. Flag Day is set in the 1970s and we travel all the way to the 1990s. And it is a story about Jennifer Vogel and her con artist father. People see the 70s sometimes as being oh disco and over the top. And it, it's really important for me to tell the true story. So it was really important for me to stay true to what the 70s, 80s, 90s looked like to a, a lower income family, you know, Sears catalog, if you will. And the nominees for costume design in film, period, are Valerie Halverson and team for Mahalia, Patty Henderson and team for Flag Day, Avery Pluis and team for 8-Bit Christmas, and Louis Sakata and team for Nightmare Alley. And the winner of the CAFCAT Award for costume design in film, period, is Nightmare Alley, Louis Sakata. Hey, thanks so much for you, this award. I'm so incredibly touched uh, to be recognized not only for my efforts, but for the efforts of the entire Nightmare Alley team. It was a uh, remarkable journey uh, spanning 18 months and sandwiched with a pandemic in the middle. Together we persevered and created some movie magic. And for that, I'll be eternally grateful. So thanks again on behalf of uh, the entire costume department. understand what costumers navigate in period correct dress. They need to know how peau de soie, lego mutton sleeves connect to a chemisette with pico edges framed by horsehair crinolettes and bustles with an added bum roll perch upon knickerbockers with chantilly lace cord pieces upon a pompadour heel or gaitered jackboots topped with a robe a l'anglaise, robe a la francaise, Spanish farthingale, frogged Chesterfield or Reading Coat? 
Depending on the action of the scene, of course. Whoa! Or you can wear that. I think this thing is broken. You're broken. And the nominees for costume design in TV period are... Joanna Siracomla and team for Murdoch Mysteries 1405, Murdoch Checks In. Rebecca Sorensen Kjellstrup and team for Riverdale 604, The Witching Hour. Vicki Mulholland and team for DC Legends of Tomorrow 602, Meet the Legends. Heather Neal and team for The Porter 101. And Tish Monahan and team for Schmigadoon 101, Schmigadoon. This award is generously sponsored by IATSE873. And the winner of the Card Award for Costume Design in TV, period, is... Schmigadoon 101, Schmigadoon, Tish Monahan. Hey everybody, I want to thank you for this great honor and congrats to the other nominees. I also need to thank my entire team. Everyone just gave 100%, 150% throughout. And finally, I want to thank Senko Paul, who was our showrunner, executive producer, writer, songwriter, all-around great guy. And he gifted us with this amazing project to work on. Thanks again. Hey. Do I look odd to you? No. No, you look great. Why? Do I look weird? Is there something in my teeth? No. No, you look fine. Sci-fi costume designers push the boundaries of materials and possibilities. They are responsible for some of the most groundbreaking concepts and often inspire designers of the future to reach for unimaginable possibilities. And the nominees for costume design in TV, sci-fi, fantasy are... Christine Toy and team for Odd Squad 320, End of the Road. Katrina McCarthy and team for Superman and Lois 111, a brief reminiscence between cataclysmic events. Laura Montgomery and team for What We Do in the Shadows 308, The Wellness Center. Carolyn Cranston and team for Snowpiercer 209, The Show Must Go On. Gersha Phillips and team for Star Trek Discovery 401, Kobayashi Maru. This award is generously sponsored by IATSE 873. And the winner for the CAFCAD Award in Costume Design TV, Sci-Fi Fantasy, Star Trek Discovery 401, Kobayashi Maru, Gersha Phillips. My name is Antoinette Messam, and I've been nominated for The Harder They Fall. This film, I think, touched people because of the colors, the textures. I really enjoyed working with my production designer to bring the color palette to life. My costumes help to define the different gangs, the different towns. It was a period Western that was a, the Black story, the Black story that was is not always told, that was erased from history, that these people existed. I'm Negar Nomati, and uh, the movie that I'm nominated for is A Hero. So A Hero is a drama about a man named Rahim um, that we are following during his two-day leave from prison. As a designer, what I tried to do was to add some details to the uh, closet of the character. This movie um, is trying to be like more a documentary. What I tried to do was to uh, port portray the authentic look of contemporary Iranians in their real life. 
Hi, my name is Wendy Partridge, and I'm the costume designer on Shadow and Bone, uh, season one. This Shadow and Bone is a delightful fantasy slash period series, quite a big part of um, the storytelling of the people that live in Ravco. Gifts are exposed through the embroidery on the costumes. They are a really big part of telling the story. And it's a big part of identifying who is who and what they do. The story of these costumes is that not only are they elaborately embroidered, but they also had to be bulletproof. So <laughs> coming up with 1875 bulletproofing was an interesting um, process. And the nominees for the CAFCAT Award for International Film and TV are Antoinette Messam and team for The Harder They Fall. Nagar Nemati and team for A Hero, and Wendy Partridge for Shadow and Bone 105, Show Me Who You Are. And the winner for the CAFCAT Award for International Film and TV is The Harder They Fall, Antoinette Messam. Thank you, CAFCAT. It means the world to me to receive this award from you, an organization that is very dear to my heart. I wanna take a moment and thank all the craftspeople, my crew, and everyone that helped me get this film to the end goal in the middle of a pandemic. I thank you. And as always, Joaquin, this one's for you. You look great. Oh, that's, 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 this is my car Lagerfeld look. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Anand. Uh -huh. Have you ever wanted to call cut? Yeah. Maybe as costume people, we need to have that power too. Yeah, like if a collar flips up. Or what about when the actress stands up and her skirt is stuck in her waistband? Ugh. Yeah, or when an actor wears Uggs because Ugg, who wants to wear heels when they don't have to? And they mm -hmm. swear up and down, we won't see feet. We, we are, are seeing feet. feet! Wouldn't that be dreamy? Until then, costume designers and their incredible teams will continue working their magic behind the scenes, bringing us adventure, laughter, solace, and inspiration. And the CAFCAD Awards will continue to recognize their efforts and achievements. Thanks for joining us for the 2022 Canadian Alliance for Film and Television Costume Arts and Design Awards. See, See you all next, next year. year. Cut! From the C to the A to the F to the T to the C A D, CAFCAD makes some noise. Y'all are some badass stitches. Let me hear you say, Judy. Stalling the costume design, never the time, never the budget. Feeling the grind, hearing the whine. Suddenly everybody got a pay.